Does anybody want to guess what I'm doing? <laughs> yes, that's right. I'm replacing a head gasket. I mean, how many of us who've messed around with cars have not done this at some point in our lives? And you've probably heard it said, hey, you know, let's just replace the head gasket. Or maybe you see this car for sale, you know, this beautiful, pristine car, and the owner says, man, you know, it, it just needs a head gasket, okay? Just, I just, it blew a head gasket, you know, the car's mint condition, just replace the head gasket and you're good to go. And, and we go out and buy the car and then we get into it and we find out that, oops, seems like it's never just the head gasket. And that's what I want to warn you about in this video. Particularly if the engine has been overheated, that is the key. If the engine has been overheated and you need to get a little bit of the history of the car. You know, was it overheated on the freeway <laughs> at high speed? Did the engine seize and quit? Because if it quit, uh, be prepared for collateral damage. And by collateral damage, I mean you have other things in the engine that have been stressed, including things like piston rings. This is, a this is one thing a lot of people don't realize. You overheat an engine and you change the tensile strength of those piston rings. And you'll put a new head gasket on, even if you can get another head, and you find out two or three months later that you suddenly have an engine that burns oil. So I just want to warn you, from my experience, it's never just the head gasket unless, okay, unless. And that unless is what I want to show you right here. This is an exception to the rule. My Mercedes here is leaking oil out of the head gasket. It hasn't, hasn't been overheated and the, you know I don't expect a problem but when I pull the head off the block there's one thing that I wanted to do immediately before I you know before I start buying parts even or go, you know a lot of people a lot of times people go buy all this all these parts and then they'll pull the the head off the engine and find out oops this is not this engine is not fixable but in this case I said okay I'm going to pull the head and the very first thing you want to do the very first thing is get the surface of the cylinder head cleaned off and check it for level and true. Okay, and there's no need to even spend your time to run down to the machine shop. Okay, now most machine shops can do this, but if you have a good machinist straight edge like this one here, you can check this yourself. Now, what was interesting was when I went to, to check out how easy these are, we just, just for the fun of it, I stopped into some auto parts stores here in town and nobody had this. Nobody was selling a straight edge to check your head. So we've decided to sell this on our website. It's a very good, high quality, accuracy assured within one thousandths of an inch, and it's a heavy, heavy steel straight edge with a bevel edge on one side and markings in inches, which makes it, you know, double duty for you. So what you do is you, you lay this across the head like this, and then using a feeler gauge, this is a 1,000th feeler gauge, I'm going to run it edge to edge like this straight on, and then I'm going to come in here and I'm going to check to see if I can slide this feeler gauge underneath. Now if you can slide the feeler gauge underneath, you need to do some more research. Different heads for different cars have certain tolerances. And at some point, the head is not millable. You say, well, I can just have it milled flat. No, you can't, because if you mill it flat and it's torqued down, then that's going to affect the alignment of the camshaft journals if you have an overhead cam engine. Similar to this, this is a twin overhead cam engine. So if this head had much warp to it, I'd have to find another head. But I've checked this head. I also go diagonal to diagonal like this and check to see if I can get the feeler gauge, and there's nothing going. This head is straight and true. And then I've used the straight edge, too, to go in here and check the top of the block. Once again, clean it off first. You've got to make sure it's totally clean, or you can get false readings. So if you want to do this yourself, this is something that is not that difficult to do. And if you need, if you need a quality straight edge for a really good price, be sure and check that out on my website. Now I want to show you an example of a friend of mine who recently went out to buy a car because the person told him that it was only just a head gasket. Okay, take a look. This is a nice little 
Mazda B2200 pickup truck. It's really nice condition. I mean, there's not a dent in it. The paint is almost in mint condition. The truck only has a 109,000 miles. And my friend picked this up for a couple hundred bucks thinking it's only gonna be uh, just a head gasket, okay? The owner overheated the engine and said, oh, I just wanna sell it. Well, he pulled ahead and right away, he noticed that, wow, there's some really bad wear marks. Almost as if the head bolts had been loose in the block. So the surface of the top of the block is really badly marked up. And, uh, you know, he put a straight edge on the top of the block and it that didn't look too okay. I mean, it's okay. It, that wasn't the problem. But what the problem was, he decided to take the head into the machine shop and ask them to just to kind of fix it up for him. And that's when he ran into the surprise. I'm back in the shop and I have the Mazda cylinder head on the bench. You know, it's cleaned off. It, you look at it, it doesn't look too bad. There's a little bit of scratching. I, it looks like someone may have replaced the head gasket previously and didn't do a very careful job of cleaning the surface of this head. So I just decided to uh, confirm what the machine shop found. So we're going to set the straight edge up on there. And, and I'm looking under there. I don't, even, <laughs> I don't even need a feeler gauge. I can see uh, a lot of light under this one and this one particularly. So if I take my one thousandths, you know, it's just going to easily slide under, under all of these. And let's, let's try 11 thousandths. Look at that. 11 thousandths slides right underneath. Let's go to 14 thousandths. <laughs> 14 thousandths goes underneath. Let's go to 15 thousandths. Okay, now I'm starting to feel a little bit of resistance. This over here is, a, is a, just under 15. And this one here is, we got 15 going into this. So the center, I think we're probably up closer to 16 or 17 thousandths. And that's way out. That's way out of specifications. And this cylinder head is not repairable. So what is, what is the owner faced with here? First off, the, the seller said, well, you know, it just, the engine just overheated. Keep in mind, the seller may not always be totally truthful about the conditions behind the overheat. But he did get the engine running, and it was literally blowing coolant out of the exhaust pipe. And you can see why. With that much variation, there, I don't even think the head was sealing. And of course, he did find that a couple of those bolts on that one edge were loose when he, when he pulled the head off. So um, if he goes and gets another head, OK, you saw the block. So the block's questionable. Well, even if he's successful at getting the head on with that problem with the block and gets it torqued down, then he doesn't know what other collateral damage is down inside the engine. And I don't know how many times I've heard of people who have done this. They've you know, got all that work and then they find out they have low oil pressure or burning engine oil or something because of all the stress that was put on not only the pistons and the rings, but even the rods and the bearings internally in the engine. So. If the engine has been overheated, as you have seen here with this Mazda, so he's thinking maybe he'll just sell the truck to somebody else because he's going to have to find a good engine. And it's hard to find a good engine, a good used engine for, you know, trucks that old. So it's, you're looking at a rebuild and then you get all that money and labor into it. And is it really worth it, even though it's a nice truck? So he kind of learned his lesson. He's kind of thinking, oh man, it was, Kent, you told me it was more than just head guess. So when you're, out, when you're out messing around with these old cars and they need a head gasket replaced, remember, <laughs> it's almost always never just the head gasket. And you already saw how handy this tool is to have around your shop. If you work on cars, having a good 24-inch machina straight edge like this is one very handy tool. And if you want to pick one of these up, just follow the link Below in the description, I got a link right to it on my website, and you can purchase it from us at a very reasonable cost, I might say.